Welcome to the Fashion Masterclass with yours truly, Angela Taylor George. On this channel, we take a deep dive into all things fashion. I will share with you all the tips, tricks, and insider secrets that I've learned over four decades in the fashion industry in New York City. In this episode, we'll be continuing our discussion on how to start a fashion brand. So classes in session, let's dive in. start by thanking those of you that have been watching, that have uh, dropped comments, that have jumped into the Facebook group, and anybody that's new here, I want to say welcome. And uh, so we're basically continuing the series on how to start a fashion brand. So this is the second episode. So in the first episode, we kind of went over um, the beginning, the concept, like what is the concept, what am I making, uh, and uh, understanding who your ideal client avatar is, who is who is your customer, doing some research, refining your concept, so that's kind of where we started. So now where I want to head to um, is I want to talk a little bit more about the product. So uh, basically, you know, what is the product that you're making? and are, are you making, you know, these days you could make like one product, like they call it like a hero SKU, SKU, stock keeping unit, like one hero SKU that can, you know, that a company could be built on, like say Tom's for instance, Tom's made that one shoe, you know, and disrupted a whole industry and of course, you know, giving a shoe back and all that kind of stuff, but it was one item, it was just a shoe. So in today's market, um, you could just make one thing and really crush with one, if it's the right one thing, you could totally crush. And it makes production really easy because you're only making one thing, which is like amazing. It's like a dream, at least to me, someone who created, you know, like, I don't know, at least, uh, you know, 200 styles a season, you know, possibly, um, I mean, I, we got better at it though, I will say, that's a little bit over development, but, you know, we were, we were developing, we were developing a lot of prints, so we were developing a lot of silhouettes, and that actually confuses customers when you have too much. Just want to tell you, you really don't want to confuse your customers. So getting back to, you know, if it's one item and you think this is my hero item, this is it, that's great. Um, but if you're developing a collection and you want to have pieces that go together, or maybe it's just like a collection of items, it could be just like standalone items. I have found it's best to edit yourself before you start making samples. Because when you start making samples, when you start making patterns, the first step is making the actual pattern, right? So when you're making patterns, that starts to get into a costly endeavor. It's time consuming, it's costly. You're making a pattern, you have to get fabric so you can cut and sew the sample. Um, so, and it's called a sample. Like it's, I was talking to somebody yesterday on the phone about she's starting something. And she was like, yeah, you know, we, we're getting the thing from the, whatever, and I'm like, oh, it's a sample, it's called a, so it's called a sample, that first thing is called, they call it a sample, um, if you don't know, but um, anyway, so um, if you're doing multiple styles, this is where I urge you to really edit yourself, and what I like to do, what I do in my company is basically look at, uh, you know, look through the sketches that the designers are presenting to me, looking through the sketches, and really seeing um, where there might be a conflict or two styles that are basically telling the same story. You know, if, if you have two styles that can compete for sales, you're just gonna split sales. And it's confusing, it's confusing to the customer, it's a hassle for production because you're producing two styles that have like maybe not great quantities, but together, if there was one style and everybody went into that one style, your quantities would be bigger. That also brings uh, production pricing down when you're cutting more units. Um, so you kind of want to look at, you want to do the editing um, in this initial phase by looking at your sketches and whatever they may be, whether you're, you know, whether you've gone to design school or you haven't, you know, whatever, you know, any type of sketch that you could put together that is just, you know, whatever that may be, a scratch sketch, but it's an understanding of what the style is for you. I think it's good to like sketch it out, look at it, and see where there might be redundancies, where there might be repetitiveness. Um, and you know, the thing is that customers get confused. Like I know we would go to market and it's like if I had like, you know, I'll make it up like three long sleeve silk blouses, like they want one. They're not buying all three. And it doesn't matter, well this one had a ruffle and that one had a crew neck and this one had a plunging neck. Like they could be very different, but they're 
the buyer sees one style. I just need one long sleeve blouse, whatever it is. So it's, it's, it's important to kind of edit yourself as a designer. I think that's critical. Um, because I've seen, in my experience, I've seen designers are just like, just go to town, go to town, go to town. And it's great. I will say it's great to explore. And I love like doing a free floating, sketching lots of ideas, getting them all on paper, getting them out of your head and on paper, but then going back in and refining those ideas and looking at them more critically and deciding where there might be, I'm just mentioning, I'm just repeating myself, repetitiveness or whatever. You know, you also want to already have like kind of a thought toward production. So in other words, if you're doing, say you're doing a collection and this, you know, you're envisioning five different fabrics, you know, maybe from five different mills, you know, that's a lot to think about, you know, mill is like a fabric supplier, call it a mill. So these mills, like five different, you know, mills, or even if it's one mill and it's five fabrics, it's a lot of different fabrics. And you have to think about, you start to think ahead about what are my fabric minimums? So if you're, you know, if your minimums are high, how are you going to meet the minimums? And if you're only doing like one style in this one fabric and another style in this other fabric, you're, and you have to sell a lot of one thing to get the fabric minimum up. So these are the kind of things I think a lot of people don't necessarily understand to look at these things in the initial stages. Once again, we're really, we're dialed back. We are in the initial stages. We've just concepted the line. We're just starting to, we've sketched our ideas. We've, we're editing our ideas and now we want to, we don't want to have repetitiveness. We don't want to confuse our customer and we don't want to have a lot of fabrics that we have to worry about minimums. And I'll be honest, like even if, even if the minimums aren't high, it's just, it's a lot to follow in production and you want to, you have to make sure everything's getting in. It can be done. I mean, it happens every day at big companies where you're making sure everything's coming in the right timeline and you're shipping everything together. If you're shipping a jacket with a pant and, and a sweater, not a sweater, but like a blouse, you know, you want to make sure that that's you know shipping together as a, as a, as an outfit so you're not you know shipping the pant one time shipping the jacket another and shipping the blouse another time you know things like that so we haven't even gotten into like who who how we're distributing that's like a whole other story we're not we're not there yet but right now it's just about refining your ideas and picking the best of the best of your sketches is really important and making sure you're not um, you're not gonna confuse the customer with having, you know, did you ever go into a store and like there's, I'm just like making it up, there could be like, you know, like a legging. And then you have a legging with this cut and a legging with this trim and a legging with this seam in it and a legging, you know, there's like five different leggings. You're like, well, which legging do I buy? I just want a legging, you know, like that kind of thing. So you just, you just, you know, I get that there's a reason why each legging is different, but somebody just like, I wanna get in, get out, just like buy it and go. And I just think, once again, you, you, you just don't want to create confusion for your customer and split sales. I think if that's, that's the one takeaway that you get from today's lesson is to not confuse your customer and not, uh, you know, and we talk about like cannibalization of styles. So just to recap, so basically, so you're deciding, okay, is it one style? Is it that hero style that maybe solves a problem possibly? Or is it this collection and you know, how many styles are in the collection? and how many, uh, maybe how many deliveries, what season is this? And also thinking about, you know, once again, getting that free floating pen that, you know, that idea is just like go to town with ideas, but then reining it back in, looking for repetitiveness, looking for redundancies, picking the best of the best, um, you know, making sure that you're not over assorted in fabrics going in as a, you know, a new brand. Uh, I have a friend, for instance, who has a collection and he had like the same silhouette in two different fabrications. And it was like, there was no reason for it. You know, it's, it, if there's, it, there, there's no reason, unless you're doing prints, like Alice Trixie does prints, it makes sense to have a silhouette that comes in multiple prints. That, that would make sense. But having, you know, the same silhouette in two different black fabrics, for instance, doesn't make sense. So not over assorting yourself with fabrics, you know, not having redundancy, uh, super important. And then next week, what we're going to get into is we're going to get into, you know, how do we, you know, this idea that's in your head onto the paper, how do we get that into 3D form? How do we make, you know, where, where do we go next? So if you didn't watch last week's episode, we went, so just to recap a little bit, we went last week from what is our product? Who is our ideal client avatar? You know, what does she do? What does she like? 
um, you know, is there a need? Doing research for the for what, what, what we want to do. Is there a need for our product? You know, is it the newer, better version of something, or is it something completely different? And if it's completely different, uh, trying to identify is it is it really off that. Is it off and no one's done it because no, no one needs it? Or is it no one's done it and this is an amazing idea? So, you know, coming to terms with that and then jumping into this this week's episode where we're, we're you, you see where we just went. So if you got value, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the share button, share this with family and friends and jump into the Facebook group, the Fashion Masterclass. Jump into the Facebook group, that's where I come in live, I respond to comments, and you know, if you have a question, jump in there. Also, drop down into the comments, uh, any questions, uh, things you like, things you wanna learn, help me to create content for the future. Um, I'd love to know what you need, and I'm here to, I'm here to serve you. I want, I want you to succeed in fashion just like I did, and I know you will. Chloe wants to see you succeed too, and Chloe believes in you wholeheartedly. Right, Chloe? <laughs> Thanks again for watching. See you next week in the Fashion Masterclass. <laughs>